Hello, what's up guys? So guy Prumzi once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm privileged to have a Nigerian who is studying here in Germany and it's on a scholarship. I'm having an interview session with him. He's going to take us through his scholarship application process and his experience studying in Germany. So if you're ready for this video, stay tuned. So welcome back guys once again to the channel. So like I said, I'm here with a very fine young gentleman. I will give him the chance for him to introduce himself, his name, where he's schooling, what he's doing here in Germany, and we we'll take it from there. So, young man, the floor is yours. Um, yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Mubarak Sudala. Or you can also call me Beji. Um, I study development economics masters at the University of Göttingen. Um, so my um so my program um focuses on um a lot of research in the development field in terms of like studying maybe like poverty and like human capital development and we do a lot of like experimentations and like study like econometric methods oh okay nice and which city is the university um in Gottingen. That's Gottingen. In, yeah Nida Saxon Nida Saxon oh I'm in Saxon and you're in Nida Saxon yeah. but you we don't share borders, right? I know I heard it's in the northern part. Um, Saxon. I, I think there's a border actually. I'm not sure. Ah, there's there's another something Saxon. Is it Alter Saxon in near yeah, Hamburg? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Okay, so you are close you are close by. So you're in the eastern part of Germany. No, 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 no. So um I think it's west, but then it's like um I mean, even like train networks are kind of like closer to the west compared to going to the east from oh okay. Yeah okay and how long have you been in germany um so i've been in germany for um roughly a year now i think on by the end of this month it's going to be like officially a year. so you've been here for almost 365 days one whole year yes. that's that's nice and why did you choose right. to continue your master's your education here in germany is it a master program or a bachelor program um it's a master's program um, program i did my bachelor's um in economics at central university in ghana and then um like central I university in, in ghana ghana yeah and oh have, so you went to i didn't know you scored in ghana no i i, I schooled in ghana like um, but you're nigerian right yeah but i'm nigerian so like okay moving you know it's like just mm. out of the same place nice. i get and, it um so like i like economics background but like i've always been interested in like um, you know development related topics and um Göttingen offers like actually like one of the best um programs for students and like they have like mm -hmm. you know a lot of um like quality research training you know and collaborations with like other institutions so yeah. but why not in the other world developed country why did you decide to come to germany to germany. do your masters yeah yes um i mean i think in a way like um funding also like played a part because um like i tried like different you know countries like when i was like putting out applications Apply. right but then um when i applied to germany also like i applied to Gottingen here and I was also able to get like the DAD funding like for my program. So like that like made it much more easier compared to like if I went to maybe like Canada or like to the UK. Like I would have to okay. pay for it, you know. Okay. So you are you're in, you're in Germany based on scholarship, right? Yes. We'll talk more about the scholarship later. What I want to know how the school application was like for you. How many schools did you apply for? When you're doing your school application was it only to that school or you did multiple application? applications um so when i was applying to germany i applied to only my school which i currently am at the university of Gottingen. um and like the application process for like the programs you apply to the school and also signifying you're applying for like the DAD scholarship and then like if they nominate you then you do an interview they nominate you to the DAD and the DAD like approves you know and so I think the standard thing is you can choose like three different schools for like a DAD scholarship. But then like I like always know like okay, like I want to study development economics, you know, and if I try to like accommodate like other programs, uh, maybe like agricultural economics or something, like my motivation letter would have to like change, you know, like try to 
should I like I cover everything and like that could yeah. have like affected my um my the quality app- of yeah the... exactly the quality of my um application. application. So I just decided to okay like this is what I want and then like I just like pulled my out my heart out like in motivation. Nice. Like, so you knew you knew what you wanted and you put like all your eggs in one basket. That's yeah. that's very nice. And so with the DAD application did you apply through the dad website or was it through uni assist how is that application done yeah um so for the program you apply to the school at least for my school university of Gottingen, you apply to the school and like cover all of their own requirements and also then you fill the dad form the dad form is like a general form so like okay. when you're sending your application to the school you also attach the dad form and in the motivation letter then you also like tell them like you you know want the DAD scholarship and why and so the school first before the DAD. DAD. You are the first person who I know in Germany does on scholarship basis so tell us how the scholarship is like because I know in Germany already we don't pay school fees. Yeah. We are paying like 350 for a semester so when they say someone is on scholarship what does it mean is it that they are paying this 350 euros for the person or yeah. what does it mean to be on a scholarship in germany um so i mean like i think there are different um scholarship bodies you know to um study in germany and um in my knowledge like the most generous is like the dad which is um i think uh deutsche akademische Akademis- uh, something dienst <laughs> yeah so like that's yeah so it's german academic um exchange services or something and so like it's sponsored by like the german government and um you know like so like the covid cover like a monthly stipend for you um so like they cover the standard you know recommended like stipend for students and then also like they cover your insurance um and like it, it even gets like much more robust in terms of like if your rent is like higher than a certain threshold they can cover it for you then if you are married um you know like your spouse also gets like some certain amount of money and, um then also like if you have kids so like it, it's like really broad and wow I, I, I'm one of the generous like most generous like scholarship you know bodies, bodies. In, in general so if your spouse are not in germany do they still benefit from the scholarship or they have to be in germany no they have to be in germany and like they have to be yeah they have to be in germany oh, okay so nice. in, in your question on like the semester the semester fee they do not cover your semester fee they only cover like your stipend and your insurance however like you you know have to like maybe save some money for the semester fee okay, okay. cool so Students who are on scholarship in Germany, are they allowed to work the same one in 20 days or because they're on scholarship and they are, I see, they are being provided by, by the scholarship scheme, they are not allowed to work? Yes, um, so I, I should also say that um, like my DAD scholarship is under the EPOS, that's like development related uh, master's program. And the DAD has like, other like projects you know so like when like someone says like they are on that DAD they can be like different you know um projects, projects. Uh, like the EPOS has development related um stuff and then there's um I think there's like an MBA program also on that DAD and like maybe like some research grants on that DAD um, okay. then PhD on that DAD so like it's like the, the DAD covers like the whole thing but like they're different um projects project. so like for my projects like you can work you have like you know you'd be giving like the 20 hours per week um permits like everybody but then before you work you need to like seek permission from your program coordinator and from the DAD and they have to like approve that this work that you want to do is um you know related to what you're studying and then like it's um would not affect your progress your academic progress because they want to ensure that like you finish you know all of your course requirements before the funding you know ends so i I think like there's that barrier of you getting a job and it getting approved so oh okay so 
I know for Ghana that a lot of students were on scholarship outside the country. And sometimes it's like for two months, three months, they've not gotten their money. Is it the same? Could Has it happened that, oh, you're on scholarship and for like a month or two, you've not gotten the money from the DAD? And since you guys are not really, you don't really have the freedom to work, have you been in a position where even though you're on the scholarship, you needed money and you didn't have access to the money? The money? Um, no. Like, um, I mean, I, I think it's like very commendable, especially like when you come. Um, so like when I came, like I did my, um, cause everybody needs to do like a German course, but I did it yeah. in Nigeria because of COVID. And, um, so like the, like there was a certain amount that we're meant to get for like to support the German language course, you know, but like we had to wait till we got here and like it probably took like two days. You upload Brilliant. like your bank account details and like they send you the money and month on month, like they keep up with, you know, like that truck payment. And personally, like I haven't been in that situation where like, you know, I'm stranded or like where, um, you know, I have to maybe delay payments or for something because they haven't paid me. Okay, nice. So I want us to talk about the visa application. Now we went through the school application and the DAD application. Now with the visa application, how is it like applying for a visa and you're on scholarship? Because I think at least for Ghana on the when you're booking appointment, I think category A are for people on scholarship and who are first class and the rest category B. So did that play a role when you're applying for this for your visa in nigeria nigeria yes um i mean like sadly we have the category theme you know and I, I think it's even like much more stringent in nigeria um but like for me um when i was in my application like if you're on scholarship like you said you apply in category a and so like i was also in category a but i i think with scholarship, it's even like much more fast tracked because maybe like you don't have to like verify like more documents, and um, but, like I, the process probably took like a week from when I attended the appointment to when I um got my visa back. I think this is the shortest time I've had so far, a week to get to your student visa. Yes, I, I mean like it's um I, it's quite common in the DAD like. Um, people that are sponsored by the um, DAD, you, you, I'm sure like you, you get things if more. Yes, you'd hear like people say one week. Mine was also in one week, you know, and um, like there wasn't like necessarily an interview, you know, they just asked, you know, like brief questions, like, so, like, what are you going to study and why, you know, I, I guess like the visa officer was just trying to, you know, just do some formalities, you know, but the DAD like supports you know it's um scholarship holders like all through and like i have like colleagues that maybe like have some roadblocks and you have to like maybe like write letter to them and maybe like they can help you like all through your process so wow <laughs> i'm wondering why i didn't apply for scholarship coming to germany <laughs> <laughs> is the application tedious when going through the scholarship application compared to the school application which one do you think is more tedious um so remember i said i applied to only the scholarship so i yeah yeah however compared to like other school um applications that i did outside of germany i think this was like you know very tedious because like they asked for like a lot of documentations and then also mm-hmm. like writing um, a motivation letter and my program also had an interview so I, you know, I think like all of the preparations for that and trying to like turn in like, you know, very quality application. But in general, I think like everything is tedious because you still have it's to tedious. write. So, yeah. Like, One question that people ask, I ask myself a lot is, DAD scholarship is very difficult to get. And I think before you can apply, you should be a first class student. Is this so, were you a first class student? As in, do you think your academics really played a factor in getting the scholarship or it doesn't really depend on your academics does other factor influence the decision of you getting the scholarship or not what are the factors yeah yes 
Um, so let me first you start by saying, like, you don't have to have your first class to get the DAD scholarship, at least for my program. I also have, like, a friend that is also on the scholarship, and um, they did not graduate to the first class. I think they had, like, a 2-1, that's, like, second upper. And, okay. um, and like, personally, um, academics plays a role. Like, it played a role, definitely, but then it's, it's not, like, a standalone, per se, because during the interview, there's like the academic component of you know, like questions that they would ask you. But then at the same time, they want to see like your extracurriculars, um, what's your current job, how does that relate to, you know, like what you're applying for, um, like other experiences, if you, you know, like taking on like maybe like community projects, especially for like development economics. They want to see if you are able to like apply yourself out, outside of like the academics. So, and um I mean, I, I think that's like also very important, actually, because it, it's not just like the books, you know, if you it's learn not something, just the like books. how are you applying it, you know, who who are you helping, kind of, you know, like, or like what value are you creating with what you learn from your bachelor's. So I, I think like that's also very important, you know, trying to increase like extracurricular activities. Cool activities. And I have one question for continuous students who are already in Germany, like myself. Is it too late for us to apply for the DAD program? Is it only available for incoming students or you can also apply for it whilst we are in school? Like we are continuing students. Yes. Um, so I, I think the EPOS is for incoming students. So um, if anyone like wants to get EPOS students, then I'm um, scholarship. So that means like they want to like start a new program, which I think is okay. possible. Yes. Yeah, but I know that that scholarship scheme for continuous students. Do you know whether it's under DAD or it's another scholarship scheme? Um, the scholarship I know of um for continuous students are, um, I think Deutschland Stipendium, the one where yeah. like, you know part school and part like private sponsors. Um. Yeah, I think that's the only one I know, actually. I, know. I think me, myself, those are the only two main scholarships I know. The Dutchess Stipendium, I think I said it well, and yeah. the DAD. I think these are the major scholarship yeah. schemes in Germany. Okay, that was very nice. I really wish I had applied for DAD scholarship, looking at the stress students go through with block accounts and form obligation. Yeah. Yeah. And so that means during your interview, no question about financial thing came up you didn't have to send your bank statement or those things were you still required to send to send those no so when you get like the scholarship you the and the dad sends you like series of documents and like including like a letter of award showing like um, oh yeah like he got this scholarship and this is what we paid him monthly and you know like he's financially like you know, he will stable. be financially stable like during his program. And so like you just need that letter and that covers for every other thing. Same for insurance also. And um yeah, I was going to say also like for the scholarship, I think there are some other like major ones, but then like in my knowledge, like they um, require German. Because I German have language. Friend, yeah, I have a friend that has this um I think Conrad Adenoya Stiefel or something. Is it KAD? Yeah, something K. Yeah, KAD. Yeah. Conrad Adenoy. I don't. I don't know the. I don't know the the yeah. meaning. <laughs> it's, it's also and they like require B2, German. But yeah, it requires like I think B one or B two German. Okay. And for the for your scholarship, you didn't need any German knowledge. No. 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 Okay. I think that would be very good for a lot of incoming students from Ghana and nigeria okay so let's talk about your moving from nigeria to germany okay. when you got your visa how long was your visa and how was the transition from nigeria to germany um so i think i got my visa sometime in july and my program mm -hmm. starts october and like they actually wouldn't even give you um like the validity of your visa wouldn't start like too early i think mine started like a week or two weeks before the start of my program. So like then I had to wait till um, like the end of September. Um, okay. But then at the meantime, like I also had like compulsory like German language courses for A1 level before coming. 
and um, but like I, I, I wouldn't say like it took like a lot of time per se, you know. Okay. And how long was your visa? Was it like the normal three or six months, or because you're in a scholarship, they give you like three years straight up? No, no. So my visa um, was valid for six months. Six however, months. Um, yeah. However, when you come in here, then like you need to get the residence permit. So um, I mean, I I think it doesn't really matter like how long because like you then need to get the residence permit. Residence permit once you get to Germany. Yes, so yes. I want to talk about accommodation. How did you find accommodation here in Germany? Is mm -hmm. your city a big city and is getting accommodation in your city a big problem for you? Mm -hmm. Um. So my city is Gottingen and it's like a small I, don't, I wouldn't say small. Okay, but like it's mm -hmm. like a university city. I think they call it that. You know, okay, and, okay. I think there's a population of like 130,000 people or so, but it's like That's mainly students. Cool. We have like two, three other universities in the city, and accommodations are I, they are not easy. I, I would say they are not easy because I had like a hard time also getting one. And um, but like my program coordinator was able to like help me also, and then I was able to get um, an apartment with the um, student and back which okay, is like nice. student union and so like student and break apartments are like um subsidized because like the cost lesser you know and so like that made it like much more easier for me did you get it before coming to germany or you did application here in germany no so i applied months like the very moment i knew like i got the scholarship which was sometime mm -hmm. in april then i applied because they have like a really long list I think it's like okay. a year. You have to wait like a year before you can wow. get a student and break, you know, apartment, at least in Gottingen. And so like, I mean, I some people will advise you to apply for the accommodation the moment you apply for the school admission, you know. Exactly. To, you know, just to make to sure. sure. Like, get, exactly. So I applied before and, you know, then I just came. Okay. That's that's very nice let's talk about student life how is student life in germany compared to students life studying in ghana if you compare the two how is it like don't bash my country anyway so my student life in ghana was um like quite awesome actually so uh, in central like i was like on um, the neutral campus and um outside you know like, it's outside like city um, but then I still like try to enjoy it, you know, have like visits outside, you know, campus from time okay. to time. And then also like friends. Um, I think making friends in Ghana was like much more easier than making friends here. And okay. student life, yeah, exactly. And student life here, um, it's tougher. Let me put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Because, um, I mean, maybe I would have a different experience if I was in bachelor's level, you know, like same bachelor's level. Maybe I would have a different experience. But then coming here for master's, it's like, you know, a different ball game. Like, you know, the schoolwork and everything is like... I know, I know. It's like very intense, kind of. So, like, that takes, like, a major part of your time as a student, especially if you are trying to like you know make sure like you have like good grades and you know all of that and um the, and the, in in, okay. in your case you have to have good grades right yeah um, so it is not a clause in my scholarship to have you know like maybe if you go less than oh, okay. threshold, then they withdraw your scholarship so, so for you us is scholarship for life yeah, for your program. <laughs> for your for program. Life. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I want to talk about the African community in your city. Do you have a lot of African Africans in your com in your city? And yeah. do you meet a lot of Nigerians? I think you would because it's Nigeria we are talking about. And do you get Afro shops and those things in your community? Mm -hmm. Um. So the first part of the question the african community yes like i like i have the opportunity like you know make a lot of african friends even outside of like west africa you know 
And really? then there are also like a sizable amount of Nigerians here in Gottingen. Um, you know, for my program, I have like two, three other like Nigerians. Um, <laughs> and then even outside the program, I've had, and like we have this um, Nigerian student in um, Germany group. I, I'm sure like the Ghanaians also have. We, so, we also have, yeah. So we also like try to have activities from time to time. Um, but like in general, I, I think I've even made like maybe more Ghanaian friends, you know. I always find myself in that Ghanaian community. I know. I know you like Ghana, so that one there. You can't even hide it. <laughs> okay, so you have to skip the working life since you are not you've not worked in Germany so far. Yeah. Or have you had the opportunity to work in Germany? Uh, no, but then I mean I in works like in the coming semester and then maybe I you know start something. Okay. Okay, sure. Now tell us about your cultural shock when you arrived in Germany. What shook you to the oh. core? <laughs> um, and are you there? Yeah, Ghan Nigeria and Germany, the culture is the same, so you are in shock. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, my very first experience, like my very first day, I had like my major. Um, should I? Culture shock? Yeah, 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 I'll also consider it as a culture shock. So when I came to Germany, I, you know, came through Frankfurt and um, I had like the morning flight. So I was here by 5 a.m. And I was meant to, you know, pick my selected train by 8 to Gottingen from Frankfurt. And like I had like a lot of time. I was at the station, seated. I was, you know, I mean, like my print, my ticket was in German, but like I, you know, translated it. I was at the right um, Gleis, I think Gleis. Okay. Yeah, platform four, but you know, apparently, like each platform also has like alphabets, you know. So like when you ah, trip, yeah. Trip, like, <laughs> so like I think I was seated at the other side, which was maybe like four F or so. But then my train was at like A to D or something, you know. Oh, my train my was God. at the other side. But where I was seated, remember I said I have a lot of I had a lot of time. Where I was seated, I saw the train, but because the train was not in front of me, you know, I thought like that was not my train. And like, you know, everything was in German, the announcements were in German. <laughs> 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 I, you know, I, I thought the train was not for me. But so I, I was seated and then when it was exactly that eight, then I was like, okay, what is going on? Like the train should be here. Let me walk, you know, down to that side, like maybe let me see what's going on. And literally, like, my train moved past me and I saw... Um, the, oh, my uh, God. <laughs> the train number. The train number. Like, I was able to, like, match the train number what I had on, you know, my ticket. And um, they did not stop for me. <laughs> <laughs> Once the door do... <laughs> my friend. Yeah, <laughs> they did not stop for me, you know. If it was in maybe Lagos, I could shout, maybe like, bro, did, so did they even try to stop them? I, I think I did. You did. Uh, <laughs> then I, the Nigeria, the Nigeria in you, <laughs> oh god, oh god, stop. <laughs> okay, I think I think I tried to move them, but and it still didn't work. Anyway, that's why. One question a lot of Africans ask is racism. Have you experienced, have you been subjected to any form of racism ever since you moved to Germany? Germany. Um, I mean, no doubt that's like a very sensitive topic, but and like we all have like individual experiences, you know, but um, personally, I have not had like physical or like aggressive racism, you know, like maybe mm -hmm. someone like verbally attacking me. Or physically attacking me like i have no experience that however like you'd and i don't know if i can still consider that as racism but like you have like a lot of stares you know people looking at you and maybe like people smiling at you weirdly you know kind of like <laughs> you, are, you are like different you know like you're walking down and like you have somebody like just smiling at you I mean, it's, it's nice. It's very nice. But then at the same time, it's like, okay, why are you smiling at me? I, 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 not, not I get to, it. Yeah, not to be problematic, but then like the smiling is like very weird, you know. But I guess like that's <laughs> maybe a, a mechanism 
for them to like appear nice, which is which I think is really nice also. But you know, it gets a little bit weird, and like you also get a lot of stares. And now, like I even like before, I used to like you know be worried. Now you don't yeah, care. Worried, but now it's like okay, it's normal. It's normal, you know. You get people to look at you, and also I I, I feel like um, for some like. Germans, like, I would say maybe, like, they just don't know how to approach you, per se. Like, maybe, like, starting a conversation with you or something. Yeah. Especially, yeah. maybe, like, academic settings. Because I've had, like, a couple of people where, like, from the start, it, it feels as if, like, they are cold. But then, like, when you relate and then, like, it's, you know, kind of, like, the conversation just flows, you know, compared to like, if I also, you know, did not, you know, Start. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay, so any last words for incoming students who are seeking to continue the education here in Germany? Any words of motivation? Now you've turned to your pastor and motivational speaker. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I I think um for anybody that wants to come to Germany to study. Um, like you should not shy away from like applying to the scholarships. Like do not disqualify yourself. You know, um, they would like you know on scholarship advertisement they have like all of these long requirements. Um, and if you like are able to like fit everything, or like slightly not fit everything, you know, just still you have apply, a chance. You know, still apply because you don't know. Um, I mean, there's also the element of luck. There's also the element of, like, the pool of people that applied, you know, and, like, if you disqualify yourself from the start, like, you know, how are you going to know if you, if you get it? Or yeah, not? yeah. And, like, the worst that can happen is, you know, like, like that. Getting day. rejected. <laughs> Which, no doubt, can be, like, depressing, but then at the same time, it's, like, it rings in and out. Like, if you do, like, year on year, you, 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 you get know. better kind of and like they know you you know and mm -hmm. if you improve i i have a friend that you know also will be coming in like same um DAD scholarship and he had he had applied before but he didn't get it and in the new inter um, new application he was selected for the interview and they asked him like what was the difference you know like what has he improved on you know from his last application Till now, even like when he was the interview the first time, yeah. but like they, they like they still acknowledge like, oh yeah, you, we we know you have we've we've, exactly. we've seen you before, we've seen your CV before. Exactly. <laughs> so like when you like um, apply and just like constant improvement. I mean, it depends on the field. If you are taking like more online courses, more like volunteering, more you know projects and all. Like I'm I'm sure like you know something key. And then also like expanding your um, chances, you know, like applying for, you can apply for more schools, apply for more scholarships. For me, like applying to Germany, even though I applied to only one school, was me expanding my, like my chances because I was focused on like the English, you know, countries. Speaking um, country. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so that's why I like applying to Germany, I applied to one. And if you pick that, that case, it looks as if I put all my eggs in one basket, but like, but Jeffy you're actually one. throwing some exactly. in Germany. <laughs> exactly. <Exactly. laughs> and that one went out. Wow, exactly. that's nice. Exactly. That's nice. So... Okay, DJ, thank you for coming to our show. We've really learned a lot. I've really learned a lot. And I hope that people else have also learned a lot. But before you go, I want to ask you a last question, which you should be frank. If you don't answer it well, we'll kick you out. Between Nigerian Jollof and Ghana Jollof, regardless <laughs> your nationality, which one do you think is better? You've lived in Ghana for some time and you've lived in Nigeria for a lot of time. But yeah. comparing the two, not the, not the country, not our music, just yeah. the right. Which one, do you, which one do you think is better? This is Nigerian Jollof. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so I hope you find this video very educative and informative. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the community. Like always, the name is Promzi, and I'm signing out. Peace.